The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. This is Donna from Viking. Cindy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey there, everyone. I'm Cindy Flores. I'm with Whitaker and Dupre Travel Partners. And I'm also here with Just Cruises Inc. And we are here to bring you Viking Cruises with Donna Nightingale. Um, Viking Cruises was founded in 1997 overseas. The company expanded to the American market in 2000. Um, and they're doing fantastic. So Donna is here to let us know all that um, they have to offer for us. So Donna, if you would take it away, we're here to listen. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me to be here. And thanks everyone for attending today. I hope you're doing well during this crazy time and staying healthy. And uh, thank you to Cindy and her coworkers there for inviting me to do this uh, webinar. We thought we would just, uh, everybody was maybe staying home and it'd be a good time to go over some of our new itineraries, but also we'll just kind of go over some of the old ones too. Uh, just to give you a little background on me, I'm the Director of Business Development for Viking and I've been at Viking for nine years now after having worked in the world of big cruise ships for 20 years. And about 10 years ago, I went on a Danube cruise and fell in love with small ship cruising. And then I had to change jobs as I wanted to be involved in this type of travel. And uh, so I thought we'd go through everything today and we're gonna start with the rivers, then we'll start with uh, the rivers of Europe and then we'll go into the ocean ships for a few minutes. And then I'll talk a little bit about the Mississippi, which is starting and the Great Lakes which I'm sure you all know up there in, the, uh, in upstate New York there. So uh, I think that some of you probably know that Viking pretty much invented the concept of modern river cruising uh, when we started, which was 23 years ago. First, we started on the rivers of Russia and then we moved into Europe. I think since then, many people have come to appreciate this type of travel, which is small ship cruising. And so we're first gonna start with the rivers of Europe. And so we are all over Europe, uh, the Rhine, the Danube, France, Portugal, Spain, we're up in the Netherlands, and then we're also over in Russia, China, Vietnam, and Egypt. Okay, I'm going to go a little slower than usual because I do think that the internet I've been finding is really slow, so I'm trying, I'm sorry about that, and hopefully this will keep up. Okay, first of all, the Viking philosophy, I think that this is really important. Is, and basically, we're not going to be everything to everyone, and we're okay with that. We're going to focus on English speaking, so we only have one language on the ships. We tend to attract mature people who are interested in art and history and culture, things like that. And we are all about the destination, the culture, and the small ship experience. Those three things really define who we are as a cruise line. Let's just talk about what's included in a Viking cruise. This is, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about it right now because no matter which product we're talking about today, whether you're on uh, the rivers of Europe or if you're in the Mediterranean on one of our ocean ships or if you're in the Arctic or Antarctic or the Mississippi, wherever, it's all the same across the, the fleets. Doesn't matter. So what we do include is a shore excursion in each port led by a knowledgeable guide. We also have the quiet box headsets, which is a receiver and an earbud so you can sync up to your tour guide and you can hear them if you're walking down the street. I personally find it really helpful because I don't hear that great anymore. And so to have that earbud in my ear, I don't miss anything. All the meals on the ship, <coughs> excuse me, all the meals on the ship are included, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and um, snacks, uh, all of that's included. Bottled water is always included, Wi-Fi and wine, beer, and soft drinks with lunch and dinner are included. And specialty coffees and teas, all the port charges and government taxes. So what that means is when you're looking at the price, there's no extras. We just talked about um, the shore excursions included in each port and you get your quiet Vox headset and you have a local guide. Um, what we do is we give you a kind of a tour of the city or town. It's, I call it a panoramic so you can see in everything that's going on there. But what we do is uh, we have a little bit of emphasis on the local life and the working world and privileged access. We really want it to be more immersive and of course cultural. So let me just give you a few examples of that. The local life. Um, 
what that really means is a glimpse into how people live there. And uh, what we do is, if you were, let's just say you were in Cologne, Germany. What we do in Cologne, Germany is we have a, um, I call it a pub crawl. It's at nighttime and it, they make over 400 types of beer and you should try them all. And you have a tour guide and it includes dinner and they take you around the town at night so you can really see how the locals live and really enjoy that type of experience. Uh, another one that we do is we have home visits. We take you into people's homes in many cities and towns and it's really fun to see how they live and see how they decorate. And I, I have found those to be the, the funnest experiences we have. Uh, working world, you know, you can see how the, the windmills outside of Amsterdam. Uh, and my husband's favorite was a tour of the Mercedes factory and they gave him a sample. Just kidding. They didn't. And um, I didn't want to go to the Mercedes factory. So, you know, I went shopping. So it's something for everyone. And that's what we're really aiming for. Privileged access. You could spend the afternoon with the Vienna Boys Choir. I think that's a lovely way to spend the afternoon. And how often can you get to do that? So before you go, we have our website, which gives you a lot of other information that you can look at before you go. And uh, one of the in, you'll find there a lot of videos, there are recipes, there's language lessons, uh, anything that you really want to learn about, it's all there. We even have our own Viking TV, which is really kind of neat. We have shows every week, and it's really, really interesting, all the different, um, they do a lot of um, our, our guest lectures that are on our ships are on Viking TV and they are doing presentation, not a presentation, but a talk about something. And it's just lovely and beautifully done. We're the most awarded Riverline. We've won pretty much every award that's out there. Um, Condé Nast, Cruise Critic, Travel and Leisure, pretty much everything that's out there. And uh, I think that you can always feel secure in the fact that we've won everything and we give a great product and it's, it's very consistent always. I thought I would talk a little bit about the ships. Uh, first of all, the itineraries and then the ships. And just to give you an idea of what we have, and I also think that I'll give you an idea of um, what we're, uh, where, um, what the popular cruises are, because I think that if I, the first one you'll see here is the Rhine getaway. This is Amsterdam to Basel, Switzerland. And this is our most popular eight day cruise. And on some of these itineraries, you know, we could have 14 ships on them. And on this one we do, one leaves every day going north, one leaves every day going south, and we sort of sell everything in pairs. And this one um, you can see has got Germany in the middle and has Cologne, which is one of my favorite cities. And on this, in the middle Rhine, you'll see Rudesheim, if you're looking on the map there, and Koblenz. That is the middle Rhine where you see all the castles. So if you're looking at the Rhine getaway, that is the itinerary for when people want to go and see the castles and all that beautiful scenery. On all of these, we do most of our cruising at nighttime, except when we need to do some scenic cruising during the day. And as I just was talking about all those castles and the scenic and the um, middle Rhine area, that is one of the areas we would have to do during the day. So you didn't miss that great experience. So we would uh, we always like move the itinerary a little bit. So you would do something in the morning and then cruise the rest of the day and experience that beautiful scenery. On all of our itineraries, you can do a couple days pre or post if you'd like. On this, you could go into Amsterdam early, or you could stay in Basel for two nights, or you could go over to Lucerne. We have two nights there, then, then you could go up into the Alps 10,000 feet, and we also have three nights in uh, Lake Como. You can have lunch with George Clooney and the twins. That'd be fun. Uh, anyway, so all these itineraries, you can go either direction also. And I think that's nice in case there's something else you want to do or match it up or whatever. It's, it's whatever you have. Next, we have another popular eight day is the Romantic Danube, Budapest and Regensburg. And you can go again, either direction. This has an overnight in Vienna. Again, on this one, you can 
go in a couple days early in Budapest or stay later in Regensburg. And Regensburg, uh, you can stay there for a couple nights. You can go to Nuremberg for a couple nights. And you can also go uh, do a couple nights in, Regens in Nuremberg and a couple nights in Prague if you'd like. There's a lot of different options for you. And uh, I would say it's if you're there, it's always a great way to extend your cruise. Since you're there, why not? And I just want to give you an idea that Ryan I just showed you and also this Danube, both of these start at $19.99 a person. It just depends on when you're going and what type of stateroom you'd like. Um, the air on the Rhine right now, we're having a special that one was, starts at, depending, again, it starts at $3.99, but it can go up depending on if you have a different air city or if... Uh, depending on your, your sale date, of course, too. The Danube here starts at $4.99. Next, you're going to see the Grand European. So if you like that Rhine and you like the romantic Danube and you couldn't decide which one you liked, you could do kind of a combination of both, sort of, and that would be the Grand European for 15 days Amsterdam to Budapest. This one has free air. So a lot of times people will do it because it just makes sense to do them both at the same time and take advantage of the free air. Now, I know a lot of people are looking at 2021 and 2022, and that makes sense. Um, but I just want you to know that a lot of people who were booked for 2020 have moved into 2021. So if you were thinking about 2021, I would say um, it might be good to think about it really soon and get yourself booked. Another great itinerary is the Danube Waltz, and this one is similar to the other Danube, just a tad bit different, and this one is Budapest to Passau, or vice versa, very similar, just, um, just different, it's got Passau on that one, and uh, the next itinerary you'll see is Holland and Belgium, the next, this is Amsterdam to Antwerp. And this is a really neat itinerary. It's very similar to our tulips in the spring, but this one also has Germany uh, with it. And it's great to go to Belgium too. Next, you'll see tulips and windmills. So I mentioned before that like on the Rhine and even on the Danube, we usually have about 14 ships sailing, seven north going north, seven go south every day of the week. So it's how it works. But on the tulips and windmills, this is a short window when the tulips are out in the spring. It's about a five, six week window there. Even though we have a lot of ships there, it sells out very early. Just want you to know. So this is Amsterdam round trip and uh, 10, day, uh, 10 days. Next is passage to Eastern Europe. And this is Bucharest to Budapest. And this is an 11 day. Very historic because there's so much um, history here that a lot of it you may not have even heard of, but this is five countries and you get eight um, guided tours. I think the internet's going really slow today. Sorry, everyone. And then another good one is if you really have a lot of time and you want to go for a little bit longer is the European Sojourn. This is a 23 day and this is 19 guided tours and covers eight countries. Uh, this is sort of a combination of a lot of the ones we just spoke about and it's Amsterdam to Bucharest. Okay, next we have Cities of Light. Paris to Prague. I really love this itinerary. And one reason is uh, it's a 12 day tour. And I say tour, cruise tour, because it will give you two nights in Paris in a hotel and two nights in Prague in a hotel. And then you cruise in between. And I think that's they're great anchor cities, Paris and Prague. Prague is one of my very favorite cities. It's a city that was never bombed. Therefore, um, the architecture is beautiful and it's got a lovely vibe to the city and you can easily walk everywhere. But there's a lot of Germany in the middle, which is beautiful scenery. And then just what I was saying about the, that one, um, the Cities of Light, you'll see the next slide is Paris to the Swiss Alps. And that is the same sort of situation. 
two nights in Paris on one end and two nights in Zurich and the other end in hotels and then you're cruising in between. And you have a tour guide the whole time, we're with you, so we get you um, around Paris, we get you to the ship and then over to Zurich. Now talking about um, France, because we just had Paris, uh, we do have an eight day uh, Paris and the heart of Normandy and this is round trip Paris for eight days and we're docked right near the Eiffel Tower so we, even though we give you a tour you have free time so you can go off and do your own thing and we also go to Normandy on this so that's a full day in Normandy and there's nothing more moving than going to Normandy and we also go to Monet's home we go to Rouen which is where Joan of Arc her, her demise so I think that it's a wonderful itinerary and it's you have so much to do on that. The next itinerary is Southern France, Lyon and Provence. And this is Lyon to Avignon or vice versa. Very scenic and all through the wineries and it's, it's a lovely itinerary with small little towns along the way. And Avignon is where the popes left. When they had to flee Rome, they went to Avignon and started chatting up to Pope. If you're a wine person, we also do a tour over there. Now let's say you like Normandy and let's say you like that Southern France one, you can combine those and you can do France's finest. And this is Paris to Avignon. And that's a 15 day and we um, basically connect them up and we'll take care of that for you and get you from one to the other. And if you like wine, we have Chateau Rivers and Wine, which is a Bordeaux river cruise. And this is round trip Bordeaux. And it every single day is spectacular because every there are so many spectacular um, chateaus there. We even um, we do wine tasting every day. We even have uh, dinner in a chateau one night. Just beautiful. Next we have the Elbe, the elegant Elbe, which is Berlin and Pro to Prague. And I, again, love Prague, so I think there's nothing better. And Berlin is so beautiful and hip and trendy and I don't know, it's got this backdrop of all this history there. So it's a fabulous itinerary. This river is a little smaller, so our ship there is a tad bit smaller, and I'll show you um, ships later as we go along. Uh, next is Portugal, so Lisbon to Porto. And this is uh, a, a, it's kind of a cruise tour also. You're in Lisbon in a hotel, and then you cruise, and then you're in Porto in a hotel. So you're kind of getting the best of everything here. And uh, you do have your tours, you do get some free time. So if you'd like to go out and go to some other areas, you can. It's, it's really well done. And uh, I, don't know. I just love the food and the wine and the port and everything they've got in, in Portugal. It's just a wonderful area to, to visit. And then next we have, if you've ever heard of the Christmas markets, Christmas markets, uh, you know, in Europe, they tend to embrace the cold. Whereas I whine about it here, but uh, in Europe, they embrace it. And they have these spectacular markets in the center of town with decorations like you've never seen. And uh, they just don't put up a string of lights, nothing like that. It's over the top. And then they have all these beautiful booths that they sell different items, Christmas items, uh, handmade items. It's just spectacular. And of course, they serve their glue wine there. And the glue wine is the hot mulled wine. And we always, whenever we do these, we always say, all right, we're going to see which town is the best, the best uh, glue wine. We, we have a tasting test in every place. It's so much fun. And so uh, on most of these itineraries, Christmas um, in Europe starts around November 20th and goes till Christmas. This itinerary tends to have a lot on this one, um, but you can do the Rhine, you can do the Danube, and you can still get a taste of the whole Christmas market. And uh, it's cold, you have to wear your, your own warm coats and your boots, but you're probably from up north here, so you're used to that. Next, uh, we have Russia. And Russia is really interesting. It's um, oddly enough where we started the company. And so we have a lot of um, kind of fun things there that I think no one else can do. Uh, we're the only company that owns our ships there, which is another long story, but we do. And so that's a really good thing for you because our ships are 
are beautiful. It's four days in Moscow, four days in St. Petersburg, and then you cruise in between, but you use the ship the whole time. You do need a visa for this itinerary. If you've never been there, it is beautiful. The Hermitage is spectacular, and Catherine's Palace is amazing with that uh, amber room. So I really think that um, if you've never done it, it's a great itinerary. I will tell you, um, we usually have China, but right now China is not happening. So we're, I'm skipping over China, and I'm heading straight to Vietnam, Cambodia. And uh, we have Hanoi to Ho Chi Minh City. We go to Siem Reap in Cambodia, which I went to last year. That was one of those um, very moving experiences in my lifetime was going to Siem Reap. So that's a 15 day. The ship there is small. It's 33 cabins. So that's one of those ones you have to book really early. And then the last itinerary to show you for the rivers is Egypt. And we have two brand new ships here. They're very small. They hold 24 cabins. So you really, this is a cruise tour also, but this is the sort of itinerary you need to book again very early. Let me just give you an idea about the ships. We have a lot of ships. Most of our ships are one class of ship and that is called the Viking long ship. The Viking long ships you will find um, all on the Rhine and the Danube and all through France, they're all the same. And when you get into other areas, uh, the Elbe River, Portugal, it's a little bit smaller version of the long ship. And then Russia, China, Vietnam, Egypt, those are different ships entirely because they are not going through locks. They don't have to worry about bridge heights, things like that. This is a, I'm going to talk about the long ships because that's a, our standard ship and that almost all of our ships are a long ship on the rivers. You'll see right here. Uh, a view of the ship and the back of the staterooms in the middle is the reception and the front is uh, there's a uh, the restaurant and then the lounge is above it and the very front is the outdoor dining. So just to give you an idea of what the ship looks like pretty quickly. I, this internet's really slow today, I apologize. Wish I could fix that. So what we have on our ships is we are Viking. So I always say it's Scandinavian design, which means nice clean lines, soft colors, marbles, beautiful woods, and of course, lots of windows. So just to give you an idea of what we, how the ship looks, of course, just always think windows with us. And uh, the next, you're going to see a picture of I call it our grand staircase. So if you've been on big giant cruise ships, this will look really tiny to you, but we are small. These ships hold about 190 people and uh, we really just, is, we don't need much more than this. So it's really, it's a nice size ship for us. So it's three decks. There is a top deck also. And the three decks, you'll see the bottom deck will have staterooms. Uh, the middle deck is the restaurant and reception and the third deck is the lounge and of course there's staterooms on each deck here and on the left or the right here sliding glass doors that's where you enter the ship depending on which side we are docked on next you're going to see the restaurant so breakfast lunch and dinner are done in the main restaurant we only we have one main restaurant and then we have the outdoor dining the, the menu is different in each one so in the main restaurant, breakfast is seven and nine, lunch is 12 to two, and dinner is one seating at seven o'clock. Of course, uh, beer, wine, and soft drinks are included with lunch and dinner. And uh, you can just see in the main reception area uh, is where you will find the menus for the day. This is a picture of the restaurant. You can, I like it because you can see how close we are to the side of the river. So it's very scenic when you're cruising, having dinner. It's just lovely. And then um, with no assigned seating, you can sit with whoever you want. And we, if you have a special diet, just let us know. We cannot do kosher or vegan. But anything other than that, we can. Next, you'll see a picture of the lounge. So if you want to have a beer in the afternoon or a vodka at night, we have all that. And you can just go up and sign that to your room. And uh, we also have in the lounge from six to seven o'clock at night, the program director gives a presentation 
and then everyone goes to dinner at seven and then at nine o'clock ish um, after dinner everyone goes back to the lounge and we have entertainment up there but it is not blue man group it's not jersey boys we're kind of small we can't bring all that type of entertainment with us so uh, we do have entertainment though a lot of times we bring it on from the ports and we do have a um, piano player and singer. And then you'll see there's a little dance floor over there on the right. And then if you walk straight through there to the back is where the outdoor dining is. And then that is called the Aquavit Terrace. And that is where you can go. And it's, a, it's smaller. Um, breakfast is a little, um, it's, it's all smaller. It's just a, a, a more limited menu there. And uh, you can sit outside and have breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or you can just sit out there and have a cup of coffee or beer in the afternoon. It's just lovely and you can watch as we sail along. And then we have the top deck. And if you're cruising during the afternoon or even if you're cruising at nighttime, you can just sit up top there with a glass of wine and uh, watch the, side, the scenery go by. It's just beautiful um, to sit up there. waiting for the slides to catch up. It's very slow today. Sorry, everybody. Okay, so there's the top deck. And then just to give you an idea of one of the staterooms, uh, we have five different types of staterooms. So if you wanted a window, if you wanted a French balcony or a full balcony or a suite, we have that. All staterooms have refrigerators. They have uh, safes. They have flat screen TVs. We have bottled water. We have um, in the bathrooms. They have all the bathroom products, hair dryers, and we have 110 and 220 plugs. And so you can always charge cell phones or whatever. We have our signature heated bathroom floors in the bathrooms, so that's lovely. And uh, there's plenty of space for storage. And then the next picture is a suite. All right. So suites are uh, living room, bedroom, that big bathroom, and then the um, full balcony and a French balcony, both. And then that those are the ones on the side. And then the very back of the ship, we have two Explorer suites, and they are 445 square feet, and they have a wraparound veranda. And of course, big bathroom there too. All right, we're going to now move over to the ocean ships. And uh, in 2015, we got our first ocean ship. To give you a little history, our owner, Mr. Hagen, Torsten Hagen, he's Norwegian, and he used to be the chairman of a small five-star cruise line called um, called Royal, Royal Viking Cruises. And he thought, wouldn't it be great to do it again if we took our river product and put it on small ocean ships? Everything I've told you about the river ships is the same on the oceans. I'm gonna talk about the itineraries first and then I'll show you the ships, but the ships hold 930 people and it's all the same. Your shore excursions included in each port, your beer, wine, soft drinks are included with lunch and dinner. We don't nickel and dime on the ships. So it's all the same across the fleet. This is kind of our signature uh, itinerary, Viking homeland, Stockholm to Bergen and, uh, or vice versa. Of course, this goes in the summertime, and it's a beautiful itinerary taking you all the way over to St. Petersburg. Give you an idea of the map there. And that's a 15-day, runs around $59.99 a person, depending on when you're going and what type of stateroom you're in. But you do see everything here. Is, it's just a beautiful cruise of the Baltics there. I think that's one of my favorite itineraries.
Oh, so slow. I'm sorry. Next, we're going to talk about the Midnight Sun. And the Midnight Sun takes you up to the fjords. And it really goes way up. So this next one you'll see is Bergen to London or London to Bergen. And uh, it really takes, takes your way up. So I'll show you the map of the next one once that comes up. I got so worried about the internet this week that I put it on my PC so I can see how fast it's going and how slow. Uh, so that's why I, I hope I'm accurate in what you're seeing there. And uh, this one, you'll see the next one has the map, but you can see how far up it goes. And if you really want a good scenic trip, this is it. Okay, just to give you an idea too, up in the Baltics, it, those are just two of them, but we have eight, 10, 13, and 15 day cruises up there. We also have the British Isles, England, Ireland, and Scotland. We also have a 13 day Iceland. So we have a lot of different options up there depending on how long you wanna go away and what you're looking to do. We've got everything. Next, I'm gonna move down to the Mediterranean area and we have eight, 10, 13, 15 day cruises. This one is Barcelona to Rome, the iconic Western Med, and it's nice to see it on the map. What I like about this, just to give you an idea, and when I show you the staterooms, you'll understand why I'm talking about the price here. This one starts at $24.99 a person, so $2,500 a person, and air starts at $7.99, depending. And if you think about that price point, this gives you uh, a Mediterranean cruise, Every stateroom is a balcony. The smallest stateroom is 270 square feet. You have your shore excursion included, your wine, beer, and soft drinks included with lunch and dinner, your internet, your bottled water, all of that's included. I think that that's a great price point. And uh, so just so you know what, what you're looking at, and it goes up from there. It just depends on what week you wanna go and uh, what type of stateroom you wanna be in. But everything is a, um, balcony. The next itinerary is the Mediterranean Odyssey, which is very similar to the one you're, you've just been looking at. It's just a little bit longer. It's Barcelona to Venice. So it just keeps going, in other words. So it gets to Rome and it just keeps going. So this is the Mediterranean Odyssey. And it's nice when you the map comes up, you can see that. This is so slow, I'm sorry. And then uh, if, in the Mediterranean, we have whatever you want looking for there. If you wanted heavy Greece, if you wanted heavy Italy, you know, we have all that. It just depends. And then however long you want to go, it's up to you. We pretty much have everything there. Uh, we now have six ships sailing um, it, with our ocean ships, so you, we've got ships all over the place there too, so I think that will help. Australia, New Zealand, this is Sydney to Auckland, and uh, this, we have a couple different versions of this one also. If you wanted the Komodo Islands or something else, you can also, I'll show you the next one, um, it, you can also start in as far up as Hong Kong and end in um, Auckland or Sydney. Um, whatever you wanted to do, we have longer versions of these that are, um, are available. And then we have Southeast Asia, Hong Kong. So if you wanted to, um, this one would be Bangkok to Hong Kong, but you could start in Hong Kong and you could also go all the way as I said to Auckland if you wanted to it just depends how long you want to be away and uh, Bangkok to Hong Kong or Hong Kong to Bangkok you know you get all over you get into Vietnam and Cambodia and uh, it's a fabulous itinerary and uh, I'll show you that itinerary real, real, that map real quick 
And then we have some itineraries also in the US. So we have Alaska, we only have one ship there. If it's something that you're looking for, that you have to really think early on. But we also have other itineraries that are out of Miami and San Juan. If you wanted an eight day or an 11 day, we have that available. And um, you can, whatever you're looking to do, we've got every all that down there. We've also got, we can also go down to the Chilean fjords. We can go to um, the Amazon. You can go through the Panama Canal. We have out of Miami. Gives you an idea there, Miami to Miami, round trip, heading, it goes all the way down to Aruba. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the ocean ship overview. And just to give you an idea of the ship, the ship holds 930 people, which is a peanut these days. And just like the river ships, it's Scandinavian design. And so that's nice clean lines, soft colors, marbles and woods and lots of windows and lots of nice areas to just sit and meet your fellow passengers. We have in what we call a living room and the living room is nice areas with couches and chairs where you can sit and chat with people. I think it's, it's really well done and there's always a little bit of light music there, piano player or trio playing. I think it's a nice way to sit and relax at night. We also have the Explorer Lounge. And we, when we um, talk about the um, Great Lakes and the Mississippi, which will be in about a minute, uh, you'll see this on that also. The Explorer Lounge is in the front of the ship. It's a two-story uh, lounge, and you can sit there and watch. If it's during the day, you can sit and watch the scenery at night. You can watch the lights on the side of the river. There is a bar up there. If you wanted anything from a cup of coffee to a mixed drink or whatever, you can have that. There's also uh, during the day what we call Mamsons, which is a deli, a Norwegian deli. And so you can get something like that and just sit and watch the scenery there also. We also um, have sort of like behind the Explorer Lounge is the Winter Garden. And this to me always reminds me of a, of a um, greenhouse sort of. And it is where we serve afternoon tea at three o'clock. And even people who've never had tea will go in and get that. And I think that it's um, also a nice place to just sit and read a book during at the rest of the day if you'd like to do that. So it's uh, the Winter Garden is just a special little sp spot on the ship. Behind the Winter Garden is our main pool. So the main pool has a retractable roof, so you can use it all the time. And we have in the main pool, we have, there's a grill there. If you wanted to get um, a burger or, or anything you want there, they have it. And then we also have a bar there. So if you wanted um, anything from a Coke to a drink, uh, of course, wine and beer are included with lunch and dinner and the waiters will come around and serve that. But you could also go up to the bar and get that if you wanted to. But this is the main pool you'll see next with the retractable roof. At nighttime, we will sometimes do entertainment up there. We have um, a big theater on the ship and we have, um, you know, we do have a dance group with us and they sing and dance. And then we also have um, two cinemas. We have a nightclub on the ship and then at the pool deck where, because since we have the retractable roof, we can do entertainment up there also. And we'll never, never miss anything. And the back of the ship, we have what I call the, well, what we call the infinity pool. And the infinity pool is, 
it's a glass backed pool so that it's supposed to feel like you're swimming in the ocean. Show you that picture in a second. Then we have our spa and it's an award-winning spa and it has everything. It has a hydro pool, it's got sauna, steam, all that. And it also has something that if you're from upstate New York, you may not even want. And that would be our signature snow grotto. And it's a kind of a Norwegian thing where it's supposed to be good for your circulation. And it snows on you and then you can go jump in the pool or go into the, the steam and you can, uh, it's that hot, cold type of thing. But the uh, spa, just so you're aware, there is no charge for the spa. And we don't charge for things like that. Uh, we also have specialty restaurants. We don't charge for those either. You can make reservations before you go for the restaurants, but you don't have to. Um, there's no charge for them. As far as the food goes, we have our main restaurant, and that is breakfast, lunch, and dinner and the menu changes every day and you know depending on where we are we like to have some regional regional specials also in there and of course we have our american type classics you know steak fish all that and then we have specialty restaurants and as i said there is no charge for those so one of them is the italian restaurant which is manfredi's known for their uh, uh homemade pasta and their ribeye steaks and I always recommend making a reservation for that before you leave and just because that way you have it. But I never do. I get on the ship and I always get a reservation. So it's not that hard. But I always think it's good to have all your ducks in a row before you go. Uh, so you have Manfredi's. We also have the chef's table, which is a set menu with wine tastings and pairings. And then we have um, Mamsen's, which is our Norwegian deli. You can go there. So we have a lot of different options for you. The grill and the pool. We try to have something for everyone there. We have great room service with a beautiful menu also. Then we're going to go to the top deck. We have uh, the World Cafe, which is one of my favorites because they have everything from sushi to carving stations to pasta stations to gelato, you name it. We have everything up there and you can sit inside or outside. And if you're outside, you can sit around the infinity pool. As far as the staterooms, this is a picture next of the smallest, and that is a 270 square foot deluxe veranda. And just like on the river ships, everything is in there. That means, you know, your refrigerator, your safes, your flat screen TVs, your 110, your 220 plugs, and you can sit, um, all staterooms have a veranda, so you can sit outside and they're beautifully done. We've got the most amazing staff on the ships. But I just thought I'd show you a picture of the smallest. And that gives you an idea of what we have. So it just goes up from there. Now I'm gonna move over to the Mississippi. So the Mississippi is gonna start in 2022. And the Mississippi is 2,000 miles long. Uh, we will visit seven states. We have four different itineraries. And uh, I would say every day for the last nine years since I've worked here, somebody's asked me, when are we gonna do the Mississippi? So starting in 2022, we are doing the Mississippi. Yay. And first, I know this is very slow today. I wish I could fix that. Uh, you'll see our ship next. So the ship is five decks and uh, it's 193 staterooms, 386 guests. It is not a paddle wheel. And therefore, uh, I think that's kind of changing the Mississippi. It's going to, uh, I think it's going to modernize river cruising on the Mississippi. Um, the ship is being built right now in Louisiana and set to be, the, that's the first one, who knows how many we get, but right now it's one at a time. And we have four different itineraries, three or eight days, and one is a um, 
a, a, a 14 day. First itinerary is Heart of the Delta, where you'll see it's New Orleans to Memphis, and you'll see Louisiana, Mississippi, and end up in Memphis. Another one, uh, the next one you'll see will be the heart, America's Heartland. And this one is up north, and this is St. Louis to St. Paul. And that one you'll see uh, Miss Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. The next one you'll see is Southern Celebration. This is New Orleans round trip for eight days, and this overnight to New Orleans. On all of these, again, you can extend on each end if you want to, whatever is of interest. And then we have our 15 day. And this is St. Paul to New Orleans. And uh, you see Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Missouri, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Louisiana. And uh, I will tell you that it's very popular. We opened up these itineraries about six weeks ago and America's Great River, this 15 day sold out in um, about four days. So we now have 2023 open for that. And then even the eight days we've moved into 2023. Um, also, we have some 2022 definitely available for the eight days, not for the 15, just so you know, if you're interested, good to think about it sooner rather than later. And this is a picture next of the ship again. And um, then I'll show you a few pictures of the inside of the ship. And it will probably look a little bit familiar because uh, the ship is, again, Scandinavian design. And again, nice clean lines, soft colors, marbles, beautiful woods, and big windows. And you'll see first a picture of the restaurant. That's where you can do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then we have our living room, as we had on the ocean ships, which is nice areas for gathering and sitting and chatting with people. And again, we have laptops on the ship. You don't have to bring your laptop all the way to Europe if you don't want to. Waiting for it to catch up here. There you go. And then we have um, up in the top deck, we have the River Cafe, which is a nice place to have um, um, to sit outside and have a beautiful meal. You can uh, have American classics there. And I don't know, I just love sitting outside to eat. So I think that's a beautiful spot. And then the next place we have is the Aqua V Terrace. You heard me mention that on um, the river ship and the ocean ship. Again, this is another spot um, to eat outside and it's casual. This will have a uh, more like barbecue cuisine, which is kind of a regional thing. And uh, again, American fare. And then we have the Aquavit Terrace, again, where you can sit outside. And then we also now go up to the Explorer Lounge, which you saw in the Ocean Ships, which is up in the front of the ship. You can sit, out, sit up top there and watch the scenery go by. And again, there's a bar there if you want to get a coffee or a drink, whatever you prefer. On this ship, we also have an infinity plunge pool. It's in the back of the ship on the top deck. Oh, you can take a dip, surrounded by beautiful views.
Okay, moving on to staterooms. There are seven different types of categories on the Mississippi and uh, it ranges from 268 square feet um, to over a thousand and all have, again, just like the rivers and the oceans, they all have king size beds, luxury linens, flat screen TVs and uh, uh, mini bars and, you know, heated bathroom floors. Just to give you an idea, and uh, I'll show you a picture of one of the state rooms. Like it's, I think that they all look similar, to mat, no matter if you're on the rivers, the oceans, the Mississippi. It's very similar. Okay, now we're going to move over to, I wanted to tell you about the Great Lakes, which I don't know if you're up in upstate New York, this might be interesting or not, but we have the Great Lakes starting, and these are going to be done on the expedition ships. The expedition ships are being built right now, starting in, again in 2022, and these are designed to do the Arctic and Antarctic. However, where do they go in the off season? They're going to the Great Lakes. I think that's pretty exciting. And they hold 378 people, and they are designed to do expedition style cruising and they've been designed to make it through um, the St. Lawrence Seaway to get to the Great Lakes in the off season. And uh, it's a beautiful, we have two of these coming. This is a great picture of the um, outside deck and then you can see into the right part there is the aula. I'll teach you a new word today. A-U-L-A -A is auditorium in Norwegian and that's the aula inside there. And you have spectacular views. Uh, and then there's a stone fire pit out on the outside. So it's, it's, it's really beautifully done. We have an Explorer Lounge on this, and we have an Aquavit Terrace on this. It's all going to start looking familiar and sounding the same. And again, Aquavit Terrace also. Then we have three pools and the three pools, it's like a trio of pools. They all have a different temperature and there's an indoor outdoor pass through and they have a retractable roof. And then we have a spa. And the spa has floor to ceiling windows. So you can be in that beautiful water overlooking this spectacular scenery. Uh, we have a fitness center, treadmills, ellipticals, bikes, weight machines, or you can just use a sauna and we have a snow grotto, yes. Okay, one of the interesting things about this is I always think it's research meets luxury and our owner is concerned about the environment. He has partnered with some notable um, organizations and he has invited their research scientists to come on and um, experience the ship and do their research from the ship. If you're on the ship, you can learn about it, the research. You may even be able to participate if that's um, available that week. I just think that that's kind of a neat part of this whole um, program that we have, and whether you're in the Arctic, Antarctic, or the Great Lakes. Another thing that we have is we have our own marina on the ship, and that is down below. So if you were going to go and do a landing uh, in the Arctic or Antarctic, you would go down below, and you would get on one of the boats inside the ship, and then you go right out the back of the ship. We will have 16 Zodiac, 17 kayaks, two ribs, and two yellow submarines, because our owner's favorite band is the Beatles, and you board your watercraft there, and you slip out the back of the ship. I think that's pretty neat. All of this equipment can be used in the Arctic, Antarctic, and most of it um, can be used depending on where you are in the Great Lakes. So there's a few places that we can't use some of this equipment. And I just thought I'd show you one of the staterooms. Um, this is the Nordic balcony, the smallest one we have. We don't have balconies on this, true balconies, because you probably won't be sitting out. And so they made these to have beautiful couches in front of them so you, for viewing, and the top window comes down. And uh, the smallest stateroom is 222 square feet. And then it goes up from there. There's the owner suite, goes up to 1,200 square feet. So whatever you're looking for, uh, we kind of have that. 
And then we have a restaurant, just like the other ships. This restaurant that you'll see coming up is beautiful views, but I don't have a great picture of that. But the restaurant is where you can get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we have our Italian restaurant, Manfredi's, again, just like we have on the ocean ships, known for their homemade pasta and ribeye steaks. And there's no charge, again, for specialty restaurants with us. No nickel and diming. And... Uh, then we also have a World Cafe on the top deck, and the World Cafe will have um, live cooking. It's an open kitchen type of thing with seafood, sushi, and a grill. And as you can see shortly uh, in the middle, they have gelato, so all's good. I just want to show you the itineraries real quick because we're almost done here, is in the Arctic and Antarctic. The Arctic is uh, round, Antarctic is round trip Ushuaia, 13 days. And the Arctic is round trip Tromso, Norway for 13 days. We've also got a 44 day from Tromso to Ushuaia. We've got um, one that's a Caribbean connection sort of, St. Bart, um, Virgin Gorder, et cetera. That um, goes from, um, it goes from Barbados up to New York. That's all, there's only two sailings, April and October. It's kind of like a um, like a repositioning type of cruise. So, and then there's one that goes from Tromso all the way down to Ushuaia. But now we're going to move over to the Great Lakes. And uh, I'm sure all of you are, if you're up from upstate New York, there where um, the travel agency is located. There's five lakes between Canada and the U.S. And that's the largest freshwater ecosystem in the world, and it contains 20% of the world's fresh water and provides drinking water to over 40 million people. And uh, the thing is about the Great Lakes, they have sea-like quality. So these ships are perfect for this because they have rolling waves, they're deep, and they have strong currents. The next picture you'll see is a really neat picture, but you can see how the expedition ship was designed to make it through the Welland Canal locks in Ontario. And that makes uh, exploration of the Great Lakes possible. We have four itineraries here. One's a 13-day New York to Toronto. And uh, then most of these, this one I think has like 199 air right now. And then the rest are eight days. I think some of these have free air. It depends on when you're going. Um, but here's a, a eight day is Niagara and the Great Lakes. It goes to Niagara on the lake and it goes up to Mackinac. Then we have the Great Lakes Explorer. This is Milwaukee to Thunder Bay. And then the last one is Undiscovered Great Lakes, Thunder Bay to Milwaukee for eight days. And these start in 2022, uh, just like the other ones. And then you'll see our scientific partnerships for the expedition ship, which is Scott Polar Group, NOAA, uh, University of Cambridge, and Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And the last thing just to say is we have Galapagos coming, and uh, that starts at the end of 2021. And that is a picture of the ship, the Santa Cruz too. And uh, there's three different itineraries just to make it simple. And uh, I think the pricing on these is amazing. Um, I, I think that they're doing very well. And then we do seven continents, 95 countries, 403 ports, five oceans, 20 rivers, and five great lakes. So just to tell you, we have a program right now. It's good till the end of June. It's called Risk Free. And what that means is um, if you wanted to book now and if you decided the day before you, want, you were scheduled to go, you could cancel and get a future cruise voucher. And it's what we call Risk Free. So if you wake up and have a hangnail and decide I can't go and leave tomorrow, um, then you could get a future cruise voucher and go anytime in the next two uh, years after that. I think that it's a great program and it expires the end of June. You just have to be booked before the end of June. And then we have 
Whitaker and Dupre and just cruises so that you can have their information here. If there's anything you would like to chat with them about and get information on. We also have a hundred dollar a person shipboard credit on the Europe rivers and the ocean ships, not on the expedition. And uh, if you book within the next week, that will be applied to the booking a hundred dollars a person shipboard credit. And Cindy, are you there? I am here. Donna, thank you so much for your time and bringing us this informative presentation. Your, the ships are just beautiful. Yeah. I and know. I love that so much is included. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. The variety that Viking has to offer between the rivers, the oceans, and now stateside with the Mississippi and Great Lakes. It, it really is very exciting. Yeah, um, thank you. It's lovely. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a lot of great people doing a good job, but I'd like to just say before I sign off thank you to everyone for being here and thank you to um cindy uh nadia and linda for having me be here today i really appreciate um asking me and um i'll let you take it from there and yeah well, well thank you again we really appreciate you doing this for us and and to our guests who joined us today thank you so much for joining we're so glad that you were able to attend i'm sure you found an itinerary that interests you with so many to choose from um, as you heard, the sailings are selling out quickly, and now is the time to book. So give your advisor a call at either Whitaker and Dupre Travel Partners or Just Cruises, Inc. We are open. We're open our normal hours, so we are ready for you. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Donna from Viking. We really appreciate it. And on behalf of Whitaker and Dupre Travel Partners and Just Cruises, Inc., stay healthy. We look forward to hearing from you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.